the 54, 54. Uh, okay. Um, I might uh, get Justin to see if he can do some peaking of the signal. Uh, if you can uh, pass the WSA2 uh, going over. Uh, 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 yeah, can you transmit WSJ2? Please transmit WSJ2 and we'll peak the antenna. We'll peak the antenna. Over, over. Yeah, yeah, I'm first, I'm first. Over, over. Okay. Far away, but it's another four degrees that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, I've got, I've got to sort out my ability to do bearings. <laughs> There's a layer that you can see just above the clouds. Yeah. Oh, it's just another, it could be a higher, oh no, it could be a higher cloud cover layer. Can you see it over here? Yeah, I think it's... But then, looking just above the fog, there's a lot of power. Yeah, there's something there, isn't there? Yeah. Now, I'll, I'll get you for the camera. Yes. <laughs> to take us through what each piece of equipment is. Okay. For the camera. <laughs> here's, here's a standard ICOM 910. The only thing that's different about it, it's, it's locked in frequency to a GPS reference, which is actually not GPS locked, but it was locked when we left Hobart, and it's maintained its frequency. It not only produces 30.2 megs very accurately to lock the 910, but it feeds 10 megs as a reference right up the hill up onto the top of this hut uh, for the 1296 megs transverter. The end result when we measure the signal this is WSJT on this computer is the difference in frequency between my frequency and David 38Z who's uh, over in Victoria some 350 kilometres away is zero hertz on a, which means it's within one bin or within within a, uh, a 2.9 hertz bin. So after cutting our frequency reference from Hobart and him presumably locking his to GPS over in Victoria, the error is less than plus or minus one and a half hertz. <laughs> at 10 gigs, which is uh, about one part in 10 to the 10th. Uh, we can see here the signal that he's transmitting. Uh, you probably can hear it, in fact, uh, the tones. Uh, his signal is really quite strong, uh, showing up around minus 5 to minus 6 dB on WSJT, which at that level WSJT actually saturates so it's probably quite a lot stronger than that. Judging by the sound, it's probably the order of about 6 dB at least above the noise. Which turns out to be about exactly what one would calculate for our system over this path using radio mobile. Uh, which I'm a bit surprised about because I didn't really expect everything to be working perfectly. <laughs> the first go! <laughs> well, not really our first go, but the first go over this distance. The other things we can see here, there's a power supply which is running off a generator set which is hidden away so we can't hear the noise. You can hear that in the background. <laughs> and uh, we've got a second power supply up on top of the hut uh, powering the, the PA. Overall we're getting about 10 watts out of 10 gigahertz into a antenna with about 30 dB of gain. 
which actually makes it 10 kilowatts. <laughs> ERP. <laughs> Probably don't really want to get in front of it. <laughs>